this is Mr. Ross I'm with me today. I have a special guest. This is Staff Sergeant Moore, and he is with our United States Air Force, and he will be just talking with us a little bit today about some opportunities uh, for those who aren't sure what to do after high school. Um, so opportunities in Air Force, and then maybe how it relates to trades too. Um, I hear he has some connections with that. And so I'm going to turn the floor over to him to let him introduce himself a little bit, and tell us about himself, and then we'll get into this. All right, thank you, sir. So I am uh, Staff Sergeant Hunter Moore. Um, I've been in Lynchburg for only around eight to nine months, so I haven't been here that long. Um, my, my goal as an Air Force recruiter is obviously to um, find the people who are interested in the Air Force and help them get from point A to point B. Um, and that's, you know, point B is obviously to be in the Air Force doing something um, for the United States of America, wherever that may be. Um, but I also have a, uh, a second option. Um, I just want to see, see, see students have a plan. Um, you know, when, when graduation hit me, it hit me hard. I, I didn't have a plan after that. And um, I just don't want to see that happen to, to students, um, like, kind of like it happened to me. So yeah, thank you very much. Can you explain that, um, that transition from graduation to how you ended up with the Air Force a little bit for us? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, so, uh, grad, the night of graduation, my dad pulled me to the side and asked me what my plan was. And I told him that I didn't have a plan. Um, he kind of laughed at me a little bit, but honestly, that that's how it, that's how it ended up. I didn't plan on going to school. Um, you know, school costs a lot of money. Um, I was like, you know what, let's go find a job somewhere. Uh, I did get lucky on that, on that uh, side because my dad got me a job where he works. And I worked there for about two years and then realized that working seven days a week, working 50, 60 hours a week, I just wasn't cutting it. Um, the money was decent, wasn't the best. Um, but, you know, I was I was dating a girl at the time and I planned on getting married and I wanted to be able to take care of my family and the paychecks I was getting just that wasn't going to cut it. Um, I had a couple of guys that uh, used to work uh, with my dad who tried to get me to uh, go to the military, say, hey, you know, at least go talk to a recruiter, see, see what's going on. Um, I'd never seen a recruiter. A recruiter never came to my school or anything like that. So I, uh, I loaded up the truck. I, I went to the recruiting office. And the way I picked the Air Force, and this is going to sound this is gonna sound crazy, but um, I was like, which basic training is going to be the easiest? And that's, <laughs> that's kind of how I chose the Air Force. Um, I don't know that sounds weird, but um, I just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't that motivated. Um, you know, once, once I got in, I started doing some PT. I started learning, you know, a little bit more about the Air Force. I was like, you know what, this was a really good pick. This, this kind of fits my, my lifestyle. Um, the Air Force compared to the other branches, I don't know if, how much research you, you guys have done, but um, the living conditions, the way leadership treats you, um, that, you know, they push you to go to college, you know, college is free. So why not take advantage of it? Um, there's, there's so many benefits and that's, that's really what made me, made me stick around, you know, through the first enlistment, um, you know, I was, I was kind of on the fence, like, Hey, do I want to keep going with this? And then when it came to my time, I was like, you know what, this is too easy. This is too easy. And that's what made me stick around. So. I got you. So what did you, what was your role in the air force? What did you do? So before becoming a recruiter, um, I actually, uh, I was a plumber. Um, so yes, in the beginning, I started out unclogging toilets, fixing sinks, um, you know, going to people's houses, fixing showers. That's what I did stateside. Um, I did go on a, a few deployments. I went on four deployments. Um, and when I deploy, uh, my, my goal was not only to be a plumber, but also um, decontaminate the water that was on base. So, you know, you're not always going to be somewhere that in a situation like that, that has running water. Um, and we had to decontaminate it and get it out to everybody, which was really cool. I, I really enjoyed doing that. Very cool. So I didn't know that was an option, really, Air Force. I always think, you know, I forget about those jobs. Um, I think of right. the guys who fly the planes. I think Marines are the guys who are on the front line. And the Navy is the guy on the boats. Like, you don't always remember that there's all the other jobs there, too. Um, how did you, is that what you did um, before for those two years you were working? Were you a plumber then too? Or, or what was the job you were with your dad? What was that? So the, the job I used to work with with my dad, he was, he was a welder. 
Okay. Um, I was actually working in, you know, the factory itself. I wasn't a welder. I just, um, I helped to move pipe from, uh, from the truck or to load it onto the trucks. Um, and that's what I did. So I was just constantly moving. And, you know, that was, you know, if I work there until he does, I mean, he's going to retire at the age of 65. I'm going to retire, you know, right as I'm turning 40. So that's, that's something else that really, that really hit me. I was like, man, you know, I can retire that early and collect that paycheck for the rest of my life. That's, that's something I could see myself doing. So, <laughs> uh-huh. um, and how did you find yourself then in the plumbing lane? Um, so you go through boot camp, you go through that, and then how did you choose that side of thing? So, um, I actually got my job before I went to uh, went to basic training or boot camp. Um, so when you take the ASVAB, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Um, everybody, regardless of the branch has to take that test and it'll kind of give you a breakdown on what your score is. And it'll also show you the jobs that you would be good in. Um, I believe if I'm not mistaken, when I took the ASVAB, I made an 80, um, which is pretty good. Um, usually averages between like 45 to 55, anything over a 70 is good. Um, an 80 is, is pretty good. Um, and it, it, the Air Force breaks your score down into four categories, mechanical, administrative, general, and electrical. And in the mechanical side, I scored pretty high. Uh, so my recruiter took that and said, hey, you sound like you want to be more of a type of a type of hands-on guy. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I can see myself doing that. You know, the job I'm doing now, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. Um, I don't constantly want to be moving, you know, wearing down my body. But um, I would rather not be sitting behind a desk which is what I'm doing now, but, (laughs) um, but yeah, that's, that's how he kind of, um, you know, told me about that. And then I was like, you know what, it doesn't sound like the most glorious job, but yeah, let's do it. You know, um, the first, um, plumbing job that was leaving left in less than a month. And that, that was something that I was looking forward to was just getting, getting out of there. Um, I wanted to get my career started and I, I basically took the first job. Um, now I'm super glad that I did because I learned something that I can use on the outside too. Um, and there are several trade jobs in the Air Force. Um, so plumbing is actually in civil engineering. Um, and that consists of electrical, power production, firefighters, um, so many different trades, uh, carpenters. Um, it's a really big career field. So. Very cool. Um, so I'm thinking a, a lot of students Like they want to do trades in the free school sounds awesome, but the idea of military, they're thinking they're on front line and don't necessarily want to get shot at. Um, So I'm assuming as the plumber, you weren't necessarily out there that happening to you. Um, So can you explain the options where you aren't putting your life at risk all the time for the students? Or maybe that's why they aren't leaning towards military. Right. Um, So that was actually another thing that hit me when he told me about the job. Um, The first thing I said to myself was like, you know, if I if I were to go into a war type of situation, who's going to shoot the guy fixing the toilet? <laughs> you know, I just made that joke to myself. But, um, you know, the, the Air Force is a, a support branch. We're not we're not in the you know, we're not in the combat situations like the other the other branches are. Now, we do have um, special warfare type of jobs that are geared toward combat. Um, but most, you know, 95 percent of the jobs in the Air Force are not gonna be geared toward that. Um, I've deployed four times. Um, I went to uh, relatively hostile situations, um, Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania, and Cameroon in Africa. Um, so the possibility was there, um, but you know, at being in the Air Force, we were just never, we were never on that front line. Um, I've, never, I've never been shot at, I've never been in danger. Um, I've never been injured like that. Um, so that's that's another reason that I chose the Air Force, because, you know, that 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 is something that you think about, you, you know, you don't want to get shot at. And yeah, that made me choose the Air Force. Very cool. Um, so what would you what advice would you have for students who are kind of like you aren't sure what to do next? Um, so. A little bit of advice would be if if your plan is to graduate high school and go get a job somewhere. Just remember that, you know, any job can can disappear the next day. Um, 
the military, that, that's not necessarily going to happen. You know, um, we're, we're always going to be here because there's always going to be a fight somewhere going on and they're going to need people. Um, another thing is if you're planning on going to college, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that I've seen um, go to community colleges and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but going to a community college is still pretty expensive. And then it's not going to lead to, you know, something huge after that, um, unless you choose to go to a four-year school, um, you know, a bigger college. Um, I would say take advantage of the, the free education. Um, take advantage of the post-education benefits. Take advantage of the medical benefits. Um, the, the living benefits, you know, the living conditions, the, just the, the Air Force way of life. Um, I mean, th there's so many, so many benefits to, to being in the Air Force that um, once, you, once you see those things put on paper, it really changes your perspective. So. And so what does your career look like now? So say you don't want to, someone who wants to join the military, but not necessarily make a full career out of it. Um, what does it look like? on the short term, if they really were looking at maybe like the college benefit of it, what does gotcha. that look like okay. for them? So I've been in for eight years now. Um, and there's actually something called the Community College of the Air Force. And what that is, and we're the only branch that has something like that. But what that is, is a specific school designed for the enlisted airmen in the Air Force. Um, I, I had to take like one or two classes online and I got my first associate's degree through that school. Um, and that is a mechanical and electrical engineering degree, which went along with the plumbing career field I was working in. Uh, once I switched over to becoming a recruiter, I got a human resource management um, degree as well. So there's two degrees that I can use on the outside. I'm also working toward a construction management bachelor's degree um, because I don't know if you've ever seen a construction site before, but the guys that are in charge aren't necessarily doing that much. You know, so they're, they're kind of hanging out, just making sure everybody else is doing what they're, they're trying mm -hmm. or they're supposed to be doing. Um, so I'm, I'm taking advantage of the, the benefits. Um, the reason I chose to become a recruiter instead, uh, of, instead of staying a plumber, is because I have two kiddos, um, twin girls, and they're wild. Uh, they just started school this year. Um, those deployments have never really, you know, never really weighed on them. But being a recruiter, I won't have to deploy anymore. And that, that's kind of the thing that made me say, hey, let's, let's do this, you know, so I can be here for the kiddos um, as, they're, as they're getting older. Um, now, I can always go back to my, my previous career field, and I might do that once they get a little bit older. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing right now. So. Very cool. All right, so you are a plumber, um, and you, so you're saying that there are trade opportunities Basically, any trade you can think of, there's opportunities. Yes, sir. There's there's all kinds of different different hands-on type of type of jobs in the Air Force. Um, you know, 95% of the Air Force is some type of mechanical or electrical type of career field. Um, the other 5%, you're going to find the pilots or special warfare or something like that. Um, you know, when a lot of people think of the Air Force, they think of planes, right, or being in the sky. Um, but that's that's not necessarily true. I, I've never been on a plane for work. You know, I've, I've traveled on planes going to work, just never been on a plane for work. Um, now, with that being said, there are all types of mechanical jobs that, that would require you to be on a plane, working on the plane, working with the plane, um, all different types of jobs. There's like, there's over 200 that I could offer somebody, you know, coming straight into the Air Force. And then as, as you get a little experience or, or rank starts to build, um, you can start applying for different jobs. So. You come into the Air Force, you're like, you know what, um, this job's cool, but I want to do something else. Um, you can apply for that as well. Let's say you're you're working on a, uh, you got a job working on a, uh, a a huge plane like a like the C5, right? It's a really massive plane, but now you want to go work on the jets. So apply for it, learn something new, go do it. So. Very cool. Now, is this unique to the Air Force as far as um, are they, are you kind of the trades for the other branches as well, or is this across all branches, um, these opportunities? I'm, I'm sure that the, um, the army, the Marines, the navies or the, the Navy, um, can offer something like that as well. 
Um, I don't know if it's as diverse as the Air Force is because I, I, I haven't really looked into their lists as much. Um, but I, I would say the Air Force is gonna be, is gonna be more diverse than those other branches are. Um, the way the job process works is, is, something, is something that's a lot different than the other branches. Um, you know, you'll, you'll talk to the other branch or the other branches and they'll, they'll be like, yeah, we can, we can give you your, your first pick. Well, that's not necessarily true. When you, when you talk to the other branches, they're going to steer you in one direction and you're going to think that they're giving you the job that you've chosen when in reality you're choosing something that they've, they've mentioned. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Um, we have people list 10 jobs that they're interested in. Um, we also have them take a, a little interest assessment to see, you know, what jobs that they would be good in. Um, you know, that, that breakdown that I talked about earlier, we take that into account and we book them one of those 10 jobs. So you're going to get something that you're interested in, something that you're good at. Um, and you're also going to be taught how to do it. You know, the Air Force is prob has probably the best training facilities out of any of the branches. Um, and then something real quick that I, I forgot to mention. Um, so we are also recruiters for um, the Air Force and the Space Force, which is kind of a kind of a newer thing. That was going to be my uh, next question. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, so go ahead. Go ahead, sir. All right. So I saw on the bottom of your email that you had the Space Force logo. So can you tell me about that? What is the Space Force? Because it's not guys in spaceships, as I would like to believe. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. So what right. is it? So believe it or not, we are actually um, we are actually on the way to to getting to that point. Um, the Space Force is going to be um, because it's in the the newer stage. It's going to be a lot like the Air Force. There's going to be a bunch of similarities. Um, the only thing is, instead of pilots, think astronauts. Um, so there are going to be astronauts. You know, they're working with NASA. They're working with SpaceX. Um, anywhere around a um, a NASA space facility, you're going to see the Space Force. Um, and then you can't just, you know, apply for the Space Force and immediately go into space. That's not, that's not a thing. That's not how it works. Um, but there are several jobs um, in the Space Force. Um, space Force, um, air and space facilities, um, rocket or um, helping out with the rocket launches, um, talking to the astronauts on the International Space Station, you know, all, all kinds of different jobs. There's like 15 different jobs that they have right now. And I would imagine even more coming in the future. Um, I think we sent, I saw something like 16,000 um, troops to the Space Force over the past year and a half or something like that. Um, so they're, they're taking people. Um, now the, um, the window to join the Space Force has halted slightly. Um, right now, I think it'll pick back up within the next six, next six months. So if you are interested in the Space Force, now would be the time to, to start looking into it. Um, yeah, but a bunch of intelligence jobs, cyber jobs. Um, yeah, it just, it seems like something cool. Um, and it's, it's going to, you know, some of the benefits and stuff, it's going to be a lot like the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Now, are there, is there like boot camp and basic training for Space Force the same that everyone has to go through or... Or is it not, since if you're a computer guy is doing cyber stuff with it, you don't really have to do 100 push-ups? Or I'm just curious what it's like. Right. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, that would make sense if you were a cyber guy doing 100 push-ups. That would be kind of kind of wild. But, um, no, so the, the basic training for everybody is, is the exact same right now. Um, I would imagine that the Space Force is working toward getting its own facilities. Um, but at the moment, they are using anything Air Force is also the Space Force. Okay. Um, basic training, um, I, I noticed you said uh, 100 push-ups. Um, that's not, not quite how many we have to do. Um, and you, don't, you actually don't have to do a certain amount before you go in. So you could actually come in, as long as you meet the height and weight standards, you could come in, um, you know, just right off the street and, and start working toward, toward the goal at the end. And that goal at the end, um, for males under 30 years of age, uh, you have to be able to run a mile and a half in under 13 and a half minutes, which isn't that bad. Um, I remember when I was 17, 18 years old, I could probably, I could probably do that in my sleep. So, 
Um, push-ups and sit-ups, that's the, the, the harder thing I would think. Um, you have to do like a minimum of like 35 push-ups in a minute and 42 sit-ups in a minute. Um, so that seems a little more challenging, but w- once you start, you start working on it. Um, it's, it doesn't take that long to get there. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, I, have, I don't really have any more questions about the process. Do you have any good plumbing stories? For the, oh yeah, I've, I've got several plumbing stories. Give me a good one. Um, let's see here. Okay. I was stationed in Germany for the first four years of my career. Um, I wanted to go overseas. Um, you kind of make a list of where you want to go. And then they, they, you know, they start at the top and they work your way down. And I got my number two spot, which is awesome. Right. Um, in Germany, uh, being the youngest airman, you know, I was, I was always in charge of going and getting tools when we were on a job, which was kind of bad in the beginning, but on this particular day turned out to be awesome. So we were in a bathroom fixing a, a stopped up drain line. There were several toilets. They were all clogged. Um, all the sinks were clogged, everything. And the two guys in charge, a little older than me, a little more experienced, they had me go to the uh, go to the truck, which was all the way across the parking lot, um, and get some tools for them. As I'm walking outside, I see a, um, a big sewer truck um, outside at a manhole. And if you don't know much about a manhole, a manhole leads down to the drain system. And that drain system led back into that bathroom. And I don't exactly know how it happened, but they, they put a hose in there and started blasting water through it. Not sure what their overall goal was. Maybe they were trying to to get rid of a a blockage on one side. But as I'm walking back toward that bathroom, uh, the two older guys that made me go get the tools come running out, covered in just all just all kinds of stuff. It was absolutely awesome. Um, (laughs) Never have I been more happy to to have to run to the truck than the tool guy. Oh yeah, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) That that was one of the one of the the best stories. Uh-huh. Cool. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share um, that I didn't ask or before we wrap this up? Yeah, I, I, I got a, a couple of things real quick. Um, first thing, like I said, have a plan. Um, don't don't get to graduation and be like, oh, I'm, I'm not really sure what to do. Um, if, if you're going to go get a job, have the job, have the job lined up or at least be talking to somebody that works there or something. If you're going to go to college, start applying. If you're a senior and you're just now, um, uh, you know, it, it's already May and you're just now applying to colleges, you're, you're running late. Um, so make sure you have a plan. Um, let's see. If you want to be a plumber, I can hook you up. Um, <laughs> I, got, I got a preference, you know, when it comes to, comes to being a plumber, I can, I can really get you to where you need to be. Um, also, don't be afraid to, to reach out to me. Even if you're not interested in the Air Force, if you're interested in the Marines, if you're interested in the Navy, um, not so much the Army because I'm not a huge fan of the Army. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but for real though, if you're if you're interested in any branch and you just want a, a friendly face to talk to, um, you know you can you can give me a call. I, I can get you over there. If you want somebody to go to the appointment with you, I can do that as well. I can set the appointment up. I can go over there with you um, and make sure that you know that they're not trying to trying to yank you around one way or the other. Um, and if you're interested in the air or the space force, um, give me a call. We'll, we'll see what's, what's going on. See if you, see if you qualify, um, see if what you're interested, the air force has to offer and, and we'll get you from point A to point B. All right. And I'll share out with this. I'll put in the description, how to do us contact him, um, the contact information when I put this video up on YouTube. And so. We'll have that. And also you can always ask me, um, I can connect you. Awesome. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully maybe next school year when we're back in person, I'll get to meet you face to face and we'll get to talk to the class. Uh, if you're still in town and we'll go from there. Thank yes, you sir. so much for joining us.